All right, everyone, we're back with Chamber Chat. Happy to have you here today. Um, a lot of us are working remotely. Um, some of us, not so much, but most of us are. And so today we wanna to talk about cybersecurity and apps. So welcome to Chamber Chat. We'd like to welcome our speaker for today, Darrell Norris from Fresh Tech Solutions. Good morning, Darrell, how are you? I am awesome and glad to be in your presence and in the presence of all the GHBCers out there. <laughs> great, great, we're happy to have you. And we want to talk about this issue of cybersecurity, apps, you know, a lot of us are not necessarily tech savvy. So uh, we're going to have a great conversation today about um, what our members can do, what our businesses can do in this world of cyber, because all of a sudden we find ourselves in this space. So, and a lot of us are not really uh, tech savvy. So we'll give some pointers today, but before we get into the questions, let me tell you a little bit about Mr. Darrell Norris of Fresh Tech Solutions. Darrell was born and raised on Houston's East Side. He attended the historic Prairie View A&M University, where he studied computer engineering. Yes, that deserves a hand clap. <laughs> Prairie View, and one of our partners, um, uh, where he studied computer engineering and minored in physics. He went on to pursue a master's degree in computer engineering at the University of Texas at San Antonio. Darrell worked as a software engineer at Tata Consulting Services, a global software consulting firm with over 400,000 employees. There he worked on over 200 software development and mobile app projects and was most recognized for the work he did on the USAA mobile app. Darrell got the itch for entrepreneurship and left corporate America after five years as a developer and business relationship manager, and is currently the CEO and co-founder of Fresh Tech Solutions, a tech company geared towards small businesses to help improve business, <clears throat> excuse me, business processes and increase customer engagement through mobile applications, web development, and software solutions. So let's welcome Darrell Norris to today's Chamber Chat. And we'll get right into our questions. So, Darrell, now that millions of people are working from home, uh, there are some concerns around cybersecurity. What should businesses, especially small businesses, do to keep their systems safe? So there's a couple of things. One of the main things is I always recommend business-grade antivirus software. Uh, whether, you know, that's whether you're working at home, even if you're working at home, there's, there's still solutions out there for, you know, for home use. Um, another thing that a lot of people don't think about is Wi-Fi encryption. Uh, make sure that your, your Wi-Fi at least has a password. Um, and if you still have that default password that came on your router box, change that <laughs> because a lot of those are available online and are, you know, commonly used. Right, and so um, those people who are tapped into their, um, we have some members who um, are employed by major corporations. They may be looking for a side hustle and that might be why they're members of the chamber. But for those who are connected to larger corporations, um, should they necessarily be, um, concerned? I mean, is there some sort of connection that they should have with their employer that makes sure that their communications are protected? Yeah, so in a lot of companies, or those big companies use VPNs, virtual private servers. Um, so, you know, that, that makes it so that you're accessing their work through their servers. Um, and then again, back to those, those strong Wi-Fi, those strong Wi-Fi encryptions at your, at your house. Um, it is also a good thing. As far as, um, you know, keeping work and personal separate, um, please do that. You know, don't, you know, if you have a, if you have a work computer and a personal computer, you know, treat, I know we're at home, but still treat it like you're in the office. You know, don't go browsing the web randomly on their servers. So just, you know, it's just kind of common, common courtesy and just, you know, being smart about the thing. Mm -hmm. And those businesses, you know, I mentioned the side hustle, um, and uh, smaller businesses that may be working from home. 
um, it's important for them to just make sure that they have password protection. You know, what other things would you recommend for someone who um, may be setting up at home um, or may be an essential uh, business, so they're out in their uh, work environment? What kind of equipment should they have in place to protect themselves? And then I'll go, it all starts with that antivirus. Um, you know, it's a lot of people that's also moving to the cloud. Um, that that's that's another thing that that we can get into. Um, but like you said, there's all there's all kind of tools out there as far as you know uh, password generators. Uh, so you keep those passwords strong. Um, I believe LastPass is a good one. Um, you know, it automatically kind of generates those those passwords for you. So you know it. it it doesn't make it so every, you know, you're, you're guessing that passwords are, you know, trying to make passwords that are easy to, to for people to guess. Um, so yeah, just like I said, those common things, um, it, it always starts with that, with that antivirus software, be careful opening emails. Um, you know, so it's, it, as far as just getting set up, I would start with, you know, getting that, your system placed up on where you're hosting your, your information at, make sure that's secure and make sure your antivirus is set up as well. Okay, and you had mentioned that the um, larger corporations will use VPN. Is that something that you recommend for small business owners? Uh, well, it, it, it really depends on their business. Um, I, I recommend VPNs. So, so companies use them for privacy reasons. Uh, but also for security and you know conveniently storing data between between these offices um, there's a lot of um, companies out there that you know they, they don't have access based on what district they're in or what region they're in so this gives companies that that way to you know for companies that are working remotely to have that same access um, so, so so that so I, I think VPNs are, are good for businesses to have just so you can kind of keep that under control and everybody, you know, in, in, in that network. So for businesses that <clears throat> may not have had the benefit of having you as a consultant and are not tech savvy as far as uh, getting VPN in place for their businesses, now that we're working remotely, do you think it's too late or is there something that they can do right now? because we really don't know how long we will be in this state of working from home. Um, do you think there are any changes they'll be able to make midstream? No, no, definitely. It's never too late. Um, <laughs> it's never too late. That goes for, for security and apps. I'll tell you a little app story about, about never too late uh, later on. But um, as far as security, you know, we're, we're still doing, we're still setting up systems. We're still sending the technicians out. Um, Cautiously, of course. Uh, so, right. e -E, hand washing. So, <laughs> you all are doing all the things, right, Darrell? Definitely, definitely, okay. definitely. <laughs> but yeah, it's definitely not too late. Um, it, it, you know, it's just a phone call. We can, you know, kind of uh, assess the needs and you know get, get get it going from there. Okay, good deal. Um, so, how important is it to back up files, and how often should this be done? It's very important. Um, I've, this is one of my lessons that I've learned <laughs> when I was a young entrepreneur. Okay. Uh, I, I, I definitely lost some data. Uh, and, oh, you no. know, it's, <laughs> by the child, you know, it, 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 it's a learning process. So, you know, now I, I do backups every day. So we, we're, we're supposed to do it. Um, regular backups, I say at least at minimum once a week. Uh, preferably every 24 hours. Um, this process can usually be done automatically. Uh, we, we set that up, through, but yeah, it can be vital, uh, especially, you know, if you're looking for an old contract or... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so, so, so yeah, it's, it's lessons learned and that's, you know, that's kind of how we uh, ventured out into the security part of our, our firm because, you know, it happened to us. So we're like, okay, it's probably going to happen to somebody else too. So let's help, let's help, help people out in this way as well. Yes. Yes. And so, you know, we hear the term backup. I mean, I would definitely be telling my age when I talk about floppy drives, <laughs> you know, back, back in the day, that's how we did things. Uh, made sure that our hard drive on the computer wasn't the only place that we had a copy of something. 
So these days, how are um, systems being backed up? You know, what's being used for that? And there's a lot of different things. Uh, most people are backing up things in the cloud now. Um, I, I personally have stuff in the cloud and I have, uh, you know, a little personal servers, server as well. So, you know, this is just because, like I said, it happened to me and I'm like extra, extra backup cautious now. So, uh, <laughs> but yeah, there's a couple of different ways. Most people are moving towards, uh, towards that, those cloud solutions as well. And so is there, you know, the idea of the cloud, you know, since it's not something you, someone can touch, you know, and most business owners are not necessarily tech savvy, can you explain a little bit about how the cloud works? Yeah, so it's, just think of it as a, so, okay, let's think, let's think those external hard drives people used to have. Um, so let's say it's, it's just basically storing and accessing data over the internet instead of using that external hard drive that you used to have, those big, you know, those big external drives that I still have. But it's it's just instead of instead of storing it in you know physically it's it's on the internet pretty much that's that's in layman's terms the best way I can kind of explain it. Mm -hmm. And so um, I know initially when the cloud first came out, you know there was a lot of talk about using the cloud. Should we use it? Should we not use the cloud? How secure are items in a cloud? I mean, how how safe can we feel about using a cloud for storage? I mean, it's, it's, I believe the safety is, it depends on what, which, which cloud services you, you're actually utilizing. So, you know, for big companies like Microsoft, they have people, they have people, you know, working on updates and keeping everything secure, secure consistently. So, so when, when you're, when you're talking about, is it more secure? I believe yeah, in some ways, yes, because, you know, people aren't looking up updates for how to <laughs> how to hack external hard drives right now <laughs> because it's just you know everybody's moving to the cloud but you know it, it's this great thing and of course you have bad people as well so you know we have those people who are, who are trying to take that information and that's just going to happen um you know regardless so I, I i feel real secure about the cloud um especially um what, what we use i, I I'm, I'm very comfortable because it's a big company Okay, so for those of us, because I'm part of that group that are technically challenged and go about technology in a kind of uh, pensive way, the cloud is okay. Don't be afraid of the cloud. Don't be afraid to use the cloud. The cloud can benefit us. So just make sure you hire a professional like Darrell to walk you through it. <laughs> and, uh, you know, just keep educating yourself on the cloud and I think it'll be okay. Um, and uh, as far as the security is concerned, that's part of the cloud service, correct, Darrell? It's not something correct. business owner is going to have to worry about constantly. Correct. Okay, very good, very good. Now, you know, we have talked a lot about passwords in business. You know, I've, I've been a victim. I've had, I don't know how many notifications on my gmail account about my password being compromised or uh you know it was found on the dark web you know someone was trying to sell it you know i had to go and change it again um and so how often should people change their passwords so the rule of thumb i like to go by is change your password every 30 days really that's my rule of thumb. Um, okay. A lot of people, a lot of people say ninety days. Um, there's a there's a couple other things, uh, but in in my organization we do every thirty days. Uh, we're not that big of a team. Uh, I've I've also heard on the other side that if you if you have a big team and you're getting those employees to change their passwords too frequently, then they would start making passwords that they could easily remember, which would mean less security. So. I, I want to come in and tell you one thing, but it's really based on, you know, based on your business and, and, and your employees. Um, but as far as security spent, uh, security isn't concerned, uh, I definitely change passwords. We try to change passwords every 30 days. Okay. What about um, when you get a notification 
let's say that you're typing in some information that requires a password. Should someone use that function that pops up on your screen that said, asks you if you want to save your password? Well, that depends on, uh, on, on what, what computer you're on. Is, is this a personal thing? Is this a business thing? Um, but for the most part, like for Google Chrome, I'm, I'm okay with Google Chrome on my personal uh, laptop for storing passwords. But for our business purposes, I would suggest something like LastPass. Right. And speaking of that, uh, um, there are some applications that people can use to save passwords. Would you recommend that? Uh, yeah. So, and it, like I said, it goes back to what, what's comfortable for you. But for me, LastPass works for me because it has that two function. Uh, one, it does the password generation for you. Uh, so, and then it also, you know, ha has it so you can it saves them, the, those saving pop-up capabilities as well. Okay. And so um, we should, that's something that we should look into if there are multiple passwords that we need to use for our business. So um, so you, you heard it from Darrell. It's okay to get those. <laughs> so Darrell, do you think that the dark web really exists? Yes, definitely. The dark web is alive and well. <laughs> it does exist. Um, it's a lot of craziness going on out there. Um, yes, definitely. The answer is yes. It, it, it's a real thing. <laughs> so, um, how can how can we check to see if any of our personal or business information is on the dark web? Is there a way to do that? It's a, okay, so there's a couple of websites out there. Uh, I believe Experian has a website that that allows you to. I believe you just Google Experian Dark Web Info Checker. It should pop up, but um, that's one thing. But honestly, just you know, having that credit report monitoring and those those, those monitoring services already in place, and you know, if you do have any activity, it instantly freeze everything and take those those necessary steps. But um, but yeah, it's a it, it's kind of a hard one to actually you know check unless you know you're actually going into that dark web. Um, you know, how, as far as the dark web is concerned, um, where does it exist? Like, how does it, where does it live? It lives on servers that are private and you cannot access it. Or it, you can access it. I've accessed it before just kind of see what's going on. Um, but, you know, you, you, for the everyday person, they won't just be able to, you know, type in darkweb.com and it pops up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I, you know, I can't imagine that too many of us would go too far into the dark web because it just, well, I won't be doing it. Uh, just because, not not going too far into it because I don't know what might pop up, but um, uh, perhaps that's something you can give us guidance on. You know, someone can uh, contact you if they have some concerns about their information being on the dark web and you know how to go about safely navigating that. And like you said, with the credit, um, with the credit agencies, I'm sure that they can help us also navigate uh, the dark web and making sure that our information is not there as well for those of us who are afraid like me. <laughs> okay, um, well, you know, this is a time of scams, unfortunately. Every time there's a disaster, somebody comes up with a scam. Um, what can we do to make sure that we're not falling victim to phishing scams? So, so I have a, a rule that I, that I live by. I'm not sure if this is going to be, you know, something for everybody to live by. But if, if there's a thought, if I think it's a scam, I'm automatically assuming it's a scam. <laughs> so if that thought pops up, like, is this a scam? Yes, yes, it is. Uh, so uh, be be cautious about that. Um, when you get as far as like emails, uh, make sure that you check that when you do get an email, you can check that domain that that email was sent from. So if it's someone at Google.com, um, you can actually just verify that it actually came from Google.com. Um, so, you know, just check those email domains, make sure it matches with, you know, whatever company you're expecting the email from. Don't click anything shaky, anything that doesn't look legit. Nobody's going to give you a million dollars. Just, just, 
just be smart about it. Well, you know, I, at this particular time, I don't think that someone's trying to get a million dollars to a family member in the United States and that they need them to be a conduit for that. <laughs> so, you know, an email scheme like that, I think is, is pretty obvious. There are some that are more subtle that, you know, might look like they were coming from your bank, you know, or from your lawyer or from someone or some company that has authority, some type of yeah. authority um, in your life. And so um, I know for me, what I do is contact my bank to make sure that they didn't send me that particular email. Um, but you're right, if it doesn't smell right or look like right, it probably isn't right. <laughs> Just leave it alone. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Are there um, some websites that we should be on the lookout for um, when thinking about putting in our own personal information? Like, for example, there are several grants going around, grant programs, um, even the loan applications are online. Everything is online these days. And there are certainly organizations that are seeking to help people that are legitimate and are capturing your information for that purpose to try to help you. But as we're going through, you know, these the internet sites and looking for assistance, um, is there anything that we should um, watch out for as far as inputting our own personal information? Yes. So, like you said um, with the previous question, there are, you know, there are probably a lot of people out here trying to implement these scams and frauds so um and it kind of the answer kind of goes goes along with the previous answer as well make sure that you know when you are entering that that information of that personal information first of all make sure it's a secure website um, make sure you see the https there um secondly make sure that it's an actual site so you know if it's a government site make sure it's dot gov at the end of it um you know there's a lot of these you know, SBA.com's out there. I, I don't, I'm not sure if that's real or not, but you know, that could be a, a scam set up to look just like SBA.gov and you know, now they have your information. Um, so, so just be, make sure you look at those URLs and especially if you get into them through a link. So if you, you know, if, if there's somebody sent you a link or something, you find a link on online, uh, when you go to that link, make sure, you know, it's what it, it, it's, it, it is what it says it is. Right, and so, it's going to take a little bit of diligence on our behalf, but at the end of the day, uh, it pays off because you don't want to get your business entangled into, you know, a, a credit scheme or something crazy. Um, so it's worth it to do that due diligence, even if you have to call the organization and say, hey, I got this email, you know, is this from you? Is this legitimate? Um, so, um, yeah, checking the websites, I, I agree with you, is, is a is a good thing to do, especially with this um, uh, with personal information, banking information, um, your your home address, you know, those types of things. It, it's important. So um, let's talk about apps for a little bit. Um, many people are <laughs> that's just <laughs> so many people are um, downloading apps these days, um, and especially you know. Some people are at home and are bored. I know our business owners are not because they are thinking about uh, their viability, their next move. Um, and so is there anything we should watch out for when downloading apps? So the first thing you should go do is download the GHBC mobile app. That and is then... <laughs> and... the GHBC mobile app should be downloaded from your app store. <laughs> You no, know, so as far as so as far as watching out for things, um, Apple does a really good job on about letting certain apps on the app process on their app store. They have a pretty intense review process. Um, so as far as that, I'm not really not too much worried about you know apps as far as especially with business owners, you know, downloading you know apps for business tools or things like that. Um, but one thing that um, that we did, we actually created a, a app for uh, the coronavirus. It's called Houston Coronavirus Resources. Um, we wanted to make something that was for, that was local. You know, it was a lot of national, you know, things out there, but we didn't have anything for local. 
But um, one of the problems that I ran to is Apple and Google, they were not approving any apps that had the word coronavirus in it because they were scared of misinformation going out. And, and I was mad about it at first, but then I thought I was like, that is a really great thing because, you know, that this is a perfect time for people to be putting misinformation out. Um, so what we did was we created a progressive web app. So, um, you know, it's not through the stores, but we still have that information out there. Um, and that's available at coronavirus.freshtechsolutions.com. Um, but as far as, you know, downloading apps, I love apps. I can talk about apps all day. I, I, I just, I think every business needs an app. So is there anything that we should be um, wary of when we're downloading apps? Because, you know, there are a million apps these days. So should, what are some of the uh, security measures that we can take on our end when we're looking to download an app and evaluating an app um, to download? What, what should okay. we be out there? So de definitely. So on that app store, whether it's Apple or Android, um, when, I, when I do my little research, uh, one thing I always check on is who, who created that. Um, so there's a, there's a spot under the app name that's going to have the developer name, whether that's a company or a name. And you can click on that name and you can kind of see what other apps they develop. Um, so, so that's kind of my way of just doing a little pre-research. You know, is this their only app? You know, are they, you know, how many downloads do, do these other apps have? You know, are they, what, these, what are these reviews? So, so yeah, always reviews are good. Um, so, you know, a lot of people use that in their choice to download apps. So reviews are important. So go ahead and review that GHBC mobile app. And um, <laughs> so, yeah, those exactly. are just a couple of things that I look for. Okay. And so um, are you seeing that with some of the mobile apps that are being downloaded, you know, once they're downloaded, they attack someone's phone, you know, get their information or disable their phones or, or their computer systems? Are you seeing any of that? I've definitely heard about any of that. I've, I don't see, I haven't seen any of that personally. Um, all of our apps are very secure, so we don't have any, any issues with, <laughs> with any of that. So first tech solutions apps <laughs> have these problems. Not at all. Um, not at all. <laughs> okay. So, um, is there a way that you know of that, um, a business owner, um, or someone who wants to download an app, is there a way they can tell that maybe one, might look a little bit off and they should not download the, the app? It's like I said, it goes back to those reviews. A lot of people, if, if, a lot of times if it's something shaky, people are going to write a review about it. People love to write reviews about bad stuff. <laughs> so, um, so that's a, and it's, it's really hard to get those reviews off of, um, you know, Google and Android. I mean, Google and Apple once they're there. So that's, reviews are very crucial on, on apps. Um, you know, if, if, if it's just bad graphics and bad logos, the screenshots are bad, I don't want that on my phone anyway. So, and it's probably something shaky. Um, there's a lot of these games that are out there that are, I, I, don't, I don't really do the gaming uh, on my phone. So, um, stay, I, I stay away from, the, from those kind of things. Okay. So, again, if, if it looks funny, <laughs> hell funny, probably is funny. So we want to stay away from those apps that don't look uh, professionally done. Um, and uh, I think that might be the first sign that you shouldn't download the app. So, okay, well, we have thoroughly enjoyed talking with you today, Mr. Darrell Norris of Fresh Tech Solutions. Um, it's been let, a pleasure. Um, let us know how we can get in touch with you. You can contact me at freshtechsolutions.com. That's solutions with a Z on the end instead of an S. Um, we're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all platforms as Fresh Tech Solutions. Uh, phone number is 346-704-3476. So we, like I said, we specialize in mobile app development, web design, security, pretty much all things tech and all things fresh. Oh, I like that, Fresh Tech Solutions. Can you give us the <laughs> phone number one more time? It's 346-704-3476. Thank you very much. And everyone, as always, please monitor our website at ghbcc.com. That's ghbcc.com for the latest COVID-19 information. 
monitor your email. If you are a member, you will get emails from us with uh, loaded with COVID-19 information. Support our business owners, HoustonByBlack.com. We have members that can provide services and products in just about every industry you can think of. So please support our membership uh, and go to HoustonByBlack.com to find a small business that can really use your support at this time and can um, offer great services and products to you. Every Tuesday and Thursday, 11 a.m., Chamber Chat is uh, on deck. So look out for us again um, next week as we will bring you some more topics that affect your business. And we are here to help. So always, uh, you can contact the Chamber through our website and become a member today. Membership has its privileges. So again, thank you for joining us for Chamber Chat today. Thank you, Darrell Norris of Fresh Tech Solutions. And we'll see you all next time. Have a great day.